So I wanted to talk about religious addiction because, you know, in the world of addiction and conversations around addiction, religious addiction is one of the the least discussed, but definitely one of the most pervasive. And I think also as, you know, as we think of religion, not just from perhaps a Christian perspective or a Muslim perspective or whatever that may be, and actually thinking more of religion as like a system of structures and beliefs that an individual adheres to in order to X, Y, Z, depending on the outcome of that religion, we can also see how there is an atheistic type religion as well that is pervasive in the world today or in the or in those circles and it's not just it's not just in the christian world but i will focus on that uh, particularly today and i think you know human ha- humans have this humans have this deep seated need to create religious structures and and it's often for the wrong reasons it's often for the purpose of trying to make themselves feel clean, um, trying to make themselves feel better about themselves in relation to others. And religious, religious addiction, depending on which setting it is, um, (laughs) in which setting it is experienced, it, it can seem less of a bad addiction because it is more acceptable in its particular circles. Right. And so, um, it's become, Again, something that's very talked about, but definitely very problematic. And I think understanding the manifestations of these religious addiction is is quite quite important. And also understanding that religion without relationship ultimately is idolatry, and it is a tool for self justification, right? And so, I mean, particularly when you think about it, and I think. I think it's important to think about it from perhaps um, why it looks worse in certain contexts than others. And, you know, my proposition is that it looks worse in particular circles than it does for others because there is the notion that or the belief that one particular group should know better. And so when I think about about more of the Christian circles and their manifestation of religious addiction, it's it's worse because in essence that is exactly what Christ tried to deconstruct was was that in itself right and I mean he, he pointed that out very much so with the Pharisees right he he mentioned that if your righteousness does not exceed those of the Pharisees then you by will no means enter the kingdom of heaven. And it's like, well, what what is the kingdom of heaven? And, and maybe in the well, in the Christian world, it is this this Edenic paradise. Okay, at some point, and there's varying Christian beliefs about that, whether it's after death or at some point in time, um, but whatever the the case may be in that context. And then you can think about it from the atheistic types. It's like, well, what is the paradise in that world, given that? there is some there is adherence to a certain set of beliefs in order to what and i would think would be to create paradise here on earth um seeing that there is no belief in something greater or something outside of that so there is that um but when we look at some of these when we look at some of these problematic manifestations of religious addictions we can think about and I'm sure you've experienced it yourself and have these individuals, particularly in, in the Christian world, where they will do in every conversation that takes place, everything somehow needs to be connected back to um, something theological or religious, right? It's like this constant need to make it about that. And it's less about the relationship with people than it is to get your point across from a, from a religious perspective or theological perspective. And it almost makes individuals feel whether you're, you have a true real desire to say those things as a mechanism to make people follow Christ or make people follow you. And as a way of you making yourself feel good because you are adhering to these things. Right. And it becomes a guise 
and, and a shield from the true core wounds that the individual is failing to address because they see um, they see every issue as simply because of insufficient faith. And they will look at institutions like the institution of psychology and and much of that is not a tool for them to tap into because what could they benefit from the secular institutions? And so they're in, in the religious addict, there's this tendency to avoid therapy, to avoid counseling, at least counseling from only, they would only like counseling from, from a biblical perspective. And typically that is just anything that will make them, will, will agree with what they're saying or or make them feel okay about what they're doing. So, you know, you, you sure you've encountered these individuals that they, they deny, they deny the idea that there is value in some of these institutions. They, they see every issue as simply a lack of faith and they will do every single situation will become about something theological. It's like, quite interesting right well and that is similarly the case in the atheistic world too and especially when you think about it at least in my context from an, an academic perspective is there is these individuals that seemingly want to make every single conversation about let's just say equity diversity and inclusion or something social justice related it's like they cannot um, they cannot partake in a conversation without having to implement that lens. And the question is why? Well, because in those circles, it's more socially acceptable and the individual will, will receive a pat on the back for introducing something like that into the conversation and in, in essence, make themselves feel clean about what they're doing and make themselves feel better. And in, in essence, it's, it's the same kind of religious problem you find with the Pharisees. It's like the self-righteousness, right? And I think for me, I see it as more problematic in in a religious perspective in, in, in a Christian religious perspective because they are supposedly supposed to know better, right? And so um, it looks worse, definitely. Um, it looks worse because, as I was mentioning earlier, it's kind of antithetical to what Christ is trying to be construct, right? And like, what was what was the purpose of religion? Then becomes the question. It's like, well, what 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 should what what should religion be there for, right? And it's like, religion is not a tool for social standing, networking, or exerting power over others. And that's ultimately what it it, it has become to a lot of people. And and again, I, I mean this not only to the Christian types and to others but also the atheistic types it's like well like if you are the type of individual that stands up for these social justice issues and equity diversity and inclusion and many of these marginalized individuals it's like well you've now joined this social group and now you can network with these types of individuals that feel the same way and then it just becomes a religion in of itself and it becomes exclusive and and others who see it differently um, are on the outskirts right and I think what's interesting too is that it's the same thing that happens in, in, in the Christian world, right? And what's fascinating even more so is that Jesus saw the, the purpose of, relig of religion as a means for right relationship. And how do, how do we know this? Well, on the Sermon on the Mount, he mentions first, go and be reconciled to your brother and then come off of your gifts. And so it's like, well, look, just look at the structure of that. It's like, well, the religious, let's say, um, the religious ritual of offering the gift is put last, very much in that sentence. The purpose of religion is to bring right relationship between yourself and others. And more, more broadly or more specific in the Christian setting, religion is supposed to bring right relationships with you others and god and anything that is is a, is not doing that is just a form of religious ad addiction which is ultimately idolatry and so 
so as, as I was saying, you know, the verse shows that the religious practices should not interfere with our relationships. And that if, if it does, we need to set those rituals aside. And that's, that's very clear in that verse. It's like, what's most important relationship? The rituals, not as important as the relationship because the purpose of the ritual is actually to point to better relationships. And so the religion of Christ was about deeper connections and not about getting ahead or rising over others. And again, like that's what you see in the atheistic religious religions. It's like, well, everything must be looked at through this lens and anything that is not looked through this lens needs to be uh, scraped. And the irony is, is that the irony is that, you know, there's a lot of good value in many of these movements. I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm definitely a proponent for, I'm definitely a proponent for doing as much as we can to have the quality of, of the races in as much as possible, right? It's like, let's deconstruct these racial barriers. Let's, let's deconstruct many of these prejudices that exist in society. I'm not, I'm not an individual that does not believe that these things do not exist. I firmly believe those things exist. But when they become so much about those things and whether what the purpose of wanting to rectify those things is, which is to bring in better relationship with one another, when you elevate the one, you bring down the other. And by essence, you exclude others from the conversation that might see it a little bit different. And rather than trying to help them understand, it becomes more so you do not believe this, then you are another. And it's the same, it's, it's the same religious problem that... Chris is addressing and it's like it doesn't extend itself just to to the Christian types and so that was you know it's it's about mutual respect the horizontal level mirrors our worship to God on the vertical level right and that's the purpose of true religion and when we think of this example of like more of the religious addiction in Christianity, you can think about this type of individual that quotes the Bible to make every point, you know, and often making everybody uncomfortable. And it's like, you know, I've seen it uh, with many, with many of the more popular Christian types where like they're speaking to individuals who do not believe the same thing that they do, but they bring in Bible verses and all these quotes into every single conversation they have with them. And it's like, that's not fostering relationship. That is trying to very simply uplift your theological point in every single conversation to someone who does not see that as, as the same authority. And it's like, <laughs> what, is, what is the value in that? It does not bring you closer. It, it pushes you apart. And it's like, well, why don't we find, why don't I listen to your, to your thoughts and to your grievances about what some of these issues are, these issues are, and and try to bridge the gap from a relationship perspective. But when you have this level of religious addiction, it's, it isn't about fostering connections, it's about imposing conformity and feeling in control, right? And it's, it's just a mask for the insecurities and painful feelings that one experiences. And, and very similarly, like in, in academia, social justice becomes a form of religion. Some individuals impose their beliefs on others, creating barriers instead of building connections because everything is seen through the lens of pro- oppression and inclusion and turning ideology into an exclusive club. And that becomes the issue, right? So the core issue is relationship, religion without relationship. When when religion becomes a tool for self justification and exclusion, it loses its true purpose, and that's exactly what Christ criticized the Pharisees for: was their outward piety and the and lack of true righteousness. Their focus on religion over relationships turned into religious ideology, which is in essence just an addiction. And it happens both in the secular types and and more so in, in the common uh, belief systems of the world today. So
one of the things to think about is to, to kind of further this example, what happened when Judas felt in his heart that he had done something wrong? Well, he went to these Pharisees, to this, these religious types, these Ju- Judeo, Judish, uh, Jewish, <laughs> Jewish um, uh, leaders, and he expressed to them his feeling of remorse. And what, what, was, what was their response to him? You see to it. What does that have to do with us? That's your problem. And how does that happen? Well, that happens in a world where the rituals and, and the theology is placed above all, and then the relationship breaks down. Other examples you have is when, you know, uh, there's a man who has been, I, think, I can't remember if he was crippled throughout his whole life since birth, but I believe that was the case. And, and, and the religious leader said, who sinned? Was it him or his parents? And it's like, the theological religious lens is the only way to look at it. And what does that do? Excludes from a relationship, which is why Christ said neither. Neither. It's neither of those things. It's not black and white. And so I think I think that's that's our call. You know, it's like to 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 all of us, because all of us are religious in one way or another, whether we want to believe it or not. And I think any good sociologist would tell you that we have religion making all the time. It's like, if you think, if you think that you're not in a religion, you're a religion. And you, maybe you'll worship at, at the altar of, of man and the altar of science, or you worship at the altar of this idea of a higher deity, or you worship at the altar of Taylor Swift and the altar of insert whoever is most popular. It's like, you'll worship at the altar of something. And so don't, don't think that you're not religious. You'll, you are. And so the important thing, it's like, why what are we supposed to do and it's like foster genuine relationship instead of creating barriers do not become religiously addicted as a means to cover up your inner wounds and hurts and deflect onto others use it as a way to foster deeper relationship and use it for its greater purpose which is to unite not separate